first heard about it, I thought it was a joke, of course, because it seems yeah. so simple compared to what Rockstar is most known for, which is Grand Theft Auto. So I was just kind of like, huh? But I was sort of intrigued because I figured if they bothered to actually do it, um, there must have been a point. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like they're a, a great publisher, a great developer, and you know that whatever they're going to do, they're going to make sure it's of a pretty high quality. I was actually like super excited for it because I grew up playing ping pong all the time. And <laughs> yeah, and then Rockstar, the Rockstar brought it in, and you know we had some fun playing it with. Yeah, it, you know we're like, wow, this is really realistic. Yeah, and that's what it, that's the big thing about it. It like uses real real physics. It makes it a lot of spins, like a lot of soft serves you can do. There's a lot of depth to it that you wouldn't really think about in a ping pong game. Yeah, I mean I think that's what surprised everyone, and that's what I liked about it the most is it takes like less than a minute to explain like, oh, how right. to play it. Which um, with a lot of tennis games is just not the case. I mean, whether it's because all right. the controls are different every time you pick up a different um, franchise or just it's not intuitive and maybe there's like... I'd, I'd argue that Mario Tennis and Virtual Tennis are pretty easy to pick up. But um, I see you're saying, they have a lot more uh, depth. And I think that hits on uh, table tennis' big problem. You have an exhibition mode, you have a tournament mode, and that's about it. And you know, while I had a lot of fun with it, I kind of kind of ran out of gas after a while. Where like, okay, I want to do something else. There wasn't anything else for me to do. Yeah, I mean, I guess to me, this game is all about multiplayer. I mean, it's so much fun in multiplayer. And what I found, which is so rare for video games, is that whoever happened to be at my house was able to play with me hmm. competitively. I actually wanted to kind of like test it on my roommates just to see how accessible the game was because I had a really easy time and we had a really easy time picking up but we play games all the time and right. I kind of like sat them down in a room and did like a controlled experiment I just kind of left I didn't like really explain anything and when they first started playing it it was um, just pressing a single button they weren't really trying to do anything else other than returning the ball and after like just two or three matches, I mean 20, 30 minutes of them sitting down and playing it, they started to really learn some of the more advanced mechanics of it. They were trying to do spins, you know, and they were understanding how to counter a backspin with a top spin and throwing it on different right. sides of the table. It's just intuitive. I mean, it's intuitive, uh, it's, it's very accessible. So, so I guess, I mean, I, I understand why you guys didn't, I, I liked it more than you, though not by that much you know, more. They're, <laughs> all, they're all good scores. Because you know. a seven to me, I feel like it a fully recommended. a little bit, a little bit stingy. A little bit stingy for a, for a game that um, I think tries to do something very different and does it well. They did. I think I mean, we all agree that they succeeded at making a good table tennis game. No doubt about that. I think we all said that. And um, one of the things that I thought was missing was maybe a uh, doubles mold. Being that like, yeah, you know, in college, when you play ping pong, it's always with four people. You know, it's like a staple. And maybe it would have been a little bit clunky, but I kind of want like to try it out and, and see. I kind of wish they had taken, um, if you could have uh, been a little more silly with your characters. I mean, I, I don't want to go crazy with character creation because that often gets mm -hmm. unwieldy, but it seems like it is um, for something that I think appeals to such a casual pick up and play audience, I think it would have been fun to make it a little more lighthearted. We didn't get to unlock like Tommy Versetti. You know, <laughs> I would like, love to have seen though, like some it, rock star characters. And, and, and the unlockables, like, like it was that. just you unlock a different colored shirts and a couple new, uh, yeah. a couple new like venues. Really, it's nothing, and that's not what kept me going. You know, so that didn't want me to make me go through the tournament modes. But what I, I really liked was that. that the graphics they were detailed enough where like. I could tell by the way the character model is standing whether they're going to do a backhand or forehand, yep. and I can position myself correctly to uh, return that. And I thought that was a, a, a great success on their part, like where the graphics made a big deal, not just to look good, but also that impacted gameplay. It's like Fight Night with ping pong. I mean, it's really how it looked. I mean, like the characters, like once you get some really heavy volleys, you actually see them start to like accumulate sweat and their shirts get darker and you can right. see it. And it wasn't until like the third or fourth time that I played it that I even noticed it. That, you know, I, you know, I think like our third game or something, I was noticing like, like my character was like getting really sweaty. And right, and then uh, when you have a heated match and you both go into the focus mode, which yep. is kind of when you're kind of in the zone, the screen kind of gets darker around everything except the table, and it kind of focuses in on you guys. That's uh, kind of a little bit of a rush there. That's kind of fun. That's when you go in like 50, 60 volleys. It gets pretty, pretty, pretty intense.
this horse came that's fun and that like I mean it's kind of like in a way, I mean, it's a little bit like the Mario sports. Well, I say, yeah, Mario tennis is a lot of fun. Except you don't have to feel like a five-year-old when you're playing. True. It. No, I really liked it. I just wish, wish it had some more legs, some more modes, a mini game or two. I don't know something because you know when you exit out of a game, maybe you want something just to kind of ease your way out. I mean, if I'm happen. putting down like forty dollars for a game, which is cheaper than a typical Xbox 360 game, but it's still I wouldn't go and rate for any current gen game. It really is. So I mean, the game really fits all the kind of like requirements of a casual game and does it extremely well. But the price doesn't really. I don't echo agree. That. I actually really disagree with you guys there. Wait you till you see what budget work. titles on PS3 are gonna be. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want to know. Marketing communications at Nintendo, and I'm just picking a few people to come in and play. You want to come with us? I'm sorry, what was that? You're gonna get to go to the front of the line. Pack it up, come on. What time did you get here? We were so excited to get in line to play. We weren't even paying attention. So follow me. We're gonna get two other people. You want to play it early? Yeah. Come on. Let's go. We're happy. We only came for this. That's what we do at One Up. We we make people happy. With the help of Nintendo, we're we're making we're making dreams come true today. That's like some monopoly do not pass go shit right there. You guys are passing go. Okay, you guys all come in and stand here. Squish in, squish in. So that was a good deed for the day, right? We can go back to yeah. conquering the world a little bit. You guys know the name. There was the notorious like backlash, I guess we could say. And everyone at Nintendo has been towing this. The, the yeah, there was a petition. Was there? Yeah, How, there was, was well, like one of those e-petitions. Yeah, and then uh, Japan said, "What's a petition?" So we explained. How did Japan feel about the petition? You know, we all knew that the name is so unusual that we needed to really tell people before E3 started where the name originated from, why, why we love it so much, what it stands for. It looks really cool, the W and the I I, and and I do think people have kind of lived with it for a week and a half, and they're starting to. Embrace it and use it. What, if anything, during this week, do you think that Nintendo could have done to improve its showing here? Is this is the showing we're seeing right now? Is this the best that Nintendo's got this week, or are, or are there things like internally that you guys have been like, hmm, maybe we could have done this instead? Like as E3 is winding to a close, we sort of like have the benefit of hindsight. hindsight. So oh. I have to tell you, everybody's walking on air. It's been. You know, even better than we thought it would be. It's it's a risky thing to come out and do something that's a right turn. Nintendo's done it before, and, and we're known for innovation, and we're really proud of that. Most of the time, it's worked very well for us. This is definitely a departure. We think it feels right, and we think it is right, and it wasn't going to be until people actually started to play it that we were going to learn if they believed in it or not. This is really where the rubber meets the road. When Sony's press conference clicked off, they opened the door. What's an, what, was the, what was your reaction personally to Sony's press conference? Would never do something quite that long. Try to start on time. Keep it short and sweet. And I just think that, you know, all the companies are trying to show their wares. Everybody's trying to do the best that they can. And, you know, they're going to have a powerful system. Microsoft's got a powerful system. And that's their deal. And I think those two really are watching each other more closely. It's definitely a compliment that they came out with their motion control sensing controller. So both Sony and Nintendo are going to need different ways to pull the audience, pull the attention back to them as you guys both get closer to launch. So as we get closer to launch, is that where we're going to start to see a little more detail about the virtual console? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we choose at E3 to take a couple pieces of really important data and share that. And it was showing the 27 games on the show floor that people could experience with that controller, playing it to believe it, which was our theme, playing equals believing. And to talk about some of the other special components, like Zelda being there on launch day, and also the Wii Connect 24, which is a really significant part of the hardware, for you to go nighty-night and get up in the morning and find something cool on your machine. Just kind of like we all check our email. It's really going to become something similar. And we felt like that was probably enough for the show, letting people really test drive, really feel the product. We're going to be taking the product out a lot between now and launch, and also be sharing more information about things like Virtual Console. One of the things that's really exciting about the prospect of the virtual console is what's exciting about the Xbox Live Marketplace. And um, what Xbox Live Marketplace is allowing people to do is they're taking like small independent games and providing a market for that. Is, is there going to be a way for small games like that to sort of appear on the virtual console in addition to the back catalog? 
It, it could very well be. Um, the system is going to be easy to develop for and inexpensive in comparison. So we would definitely encourage, you know, smaller creative developers. But, you know, we'll just wait and see what happens on the virtual console. It's going to be full of a lot. I talked with another Nintendo person about the Wii Music Orchestra, which I think is at the cusp of being incredible. Like, and I know right now it's a live tech demo and nothing more, no official plans to make a game out of it. But are we going to see, are you guys hoping or looking into the possibility of making a Wii Music series, like the Wii Sports games? I wouldn't necessarily a Wii, say a Wii Music series, but, but we do have a really keen eye toward music in a variety of ways, if you see, as you have seen from some of the tech demos, anything's possible in the future. It's really important for us to be here, get consumer feedback. I mean, it's not initially a consumer show, but there are some consumers here, so getting feedback from them is very helpful for us. If anyone wants orchestra, they should email in to you and let us know. Yeah. I'll be there nice. day one. You know, it's good to hear. It's really important for us to hear this stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. Turn it off, Robert. So Ryan, um, the interns want to know a little bit about E3. What's what's it all about? <laughs> if, you, if you like sleeping, you don't get to do any of that. If you like video games, you hardly get to look at those. <laughs> most of the time, you're spent sitting behind your computer, compressing videos and uh, running around to different appointments. Our cameras don't are, are pretty heavy. They weigh a lot, so like. Our arms, your arms will be hurting. You're gonna be really tired. You're gonna be physically and mentally drained. So and get all your smiles in now. Because uh, there probably won't be any by the it's other gonna, way. It's going to be a lot of pain. Camera rolling? So we are three hours into our journey now. Some of us sleeping. Some of us talking. And the rest of us playing video games. So, uh, so are we far away from it still, or? We got about four hours. Out here. We have about four hours, three or four hours to go. So. Fighting match coming up, are you ready? I've been training, I've been working yeah. hard, you know, lifting weights, you know, eating right, drink a lot of water. It's cool, it's really responsive. the Ziff Davis party with a uh, real legend of rock. What do you have to say about the party so far? So, uh, just came to cause a little bit of trouble, you know. Do that rock and roll thing. That's rock and roll. What happened was we uh, ran into the little side of a pillar here and um, uh, 
door got pushed in and the window got broken. So Rob and Cesar are trying to do a little repair work here. Uh, luckily we had a Guitar Hero 2 uh, poster we used to put over the front. We got a, Mikey found a trash bag, so we put it on the back, you know, a little bit of protection there from the wind and whatnot that might come at us, you know, while we're heading down the freeway. So, uh, we survive, we survive. I think we'll be all right. We're gonna be okay. You know, we work as a team and now I think we'll pull through it. Yeah. I like that, I like that.